Hey everyone, welcome back to Painted Studio. Maury Curtis Dunbar, happy Halloween. Yes, I'm actually wearing, this is pro I think the very first one of these I ever got in New Orleans and it's still my favorite to this day. So I'm dressed for Halloween, but we are going to work on some Christmas goodies. So I'm gonna just, hey Jamie, nice to see you here. So we're not going to do any painting and stuff, but you you know, I've been making all these ornaments and I have to finish them up. I mean, Halloween's today, starting Monday, I have to start decorating the studio for Christmas stuff, and so I kind of I kind of need to finish up what I'm doing here. Hey Susan, hey Rima, nice to see you. Oh my god, you're laughing. Susan, I know you're laughing at my headband. But we have all these little ornaments and I actually have to finish them up. Hi, Sue Turner and Sue Walters, too. Thank you all for popping in. So what we're going to do, I went and made a huge run to Michael's. It was only supposed to be to go and pick up some ribbon and some glue because I was out of glue here. I know, how, how does any studio ever run out of glue? Well, I did. So I made a run to Michael's, and oh, let's see. So to trim out the ornaments, I have... A bag full of stuff. Can you show me how to tie a ribbon on a round ornament? Um, no, because I don't have any round ornaments. So there. Sorry, sorry to say no, because you know I don't like to, but I, I don't, I don't have any round ornaments to tie ribbons on. All right, so I'm going to show you the the other fun stuff I grabbed. Because oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Oh, I went to, to to Michael's just to pick up a few things, and yeah, that few things turned into kind of a lot. Those are just a couple of magazines. First of all, look what they have. You can make your own advent calendar. You can do this. You can. It opens up, and you put money or a little piece of candy in here. Now, I have one of these that I bought years ago for my my son and my nephew when my nephew was living with us because they always had, my sister always had one i'm gonna foil one of these we're gonna make this our own awesome thing so the next time you see it i'll have primed it and painted it let me reach over here oh i found more goodies yeah it was just supposed to be you know all i was doing was stopping off to get ribbons no i ended up with all the twigs and stuff and I found that one, that um, cut out for the uh, advent calendar. And then they had an, oh crap, I got one that's broken. I'm gonna have to take it back, I think. If it's, if I grabbed it broken left, I'll know in a second because there won't be any little piece of wood in the bottom of there. Okay, I gotta return one because I just noticed it was, I was grabbing stuff so fast. They have a 99 cent bin at Michael's. I got a little stand-up cheers, a little stand-up Noel, a little stand-up Santa, and a little stand-up Mary. But you see, when I grabbed this one, I didn't look close and the end was broken off. So I'll take that back to Michael's today and exchange it. So that's actually a good thing that I opened this up while I was on here with you. I'm going through. I got my Michaels bag right here, so this goes right back into the Michaels bag, and that'll go right back to the store tomorrow. So when you see some of this stuff next, you're going to see that I have primed these, and we're going to figure, I don't even know what I'm doing with it all, but I got a whole big window to finish decorating and lots of customers to create wonderful things for. So yeah, I got a lot going on here. Uh, Rima, you got those? Yeah, for 99 cents, how do you argue? All right, I'm going to swing this down to my work surface, which, look, clean paper. And we have tons and tons and tons of ornaments to work with that, you know, need to have their ribbons on them, need to be their, have their decorations. And then I had these little frames that I did over the summer, I, and, you know, for various things. I haven't even done... Some of these I haven't even done the backs on. Oh, shame on me. But I also have all of these little dollar store ornaments that I got. So I thought, how cute would it be if I took a little ribbon and hung 
the ornaments in the center of this to make an even larger ornament. So we, we would string the ornament in here. So that would try go into here and then we tie another loop here so that you could hang on the tree and it would be a dimensional ornament. So let me see, let's, let's start with that idea and it's either gonna be great or it's gonna look like crap. And truly, I don't know some of the answers to that until I put it all together. Let's open up the, the ribbons. And I have a bit, of, I got reds and I got golds because I thought figured that will go with almost everything I have. I didn't need to buy 50,000 containers of ribbons. And trust me, when you walk into Michael's 15 minutes before they close, you start grabbing a lot of stuff fast, just in hopes of getting out of there <laughs> with everything you need. Okay, so I think, this is the one that has, yeah, that's nice and thin. And I used to have some gold and silver threads. Hang on a second, everybody. I should have looked for them before, but I think I know where they are. And if I can't find them in one quick look, I'm not gonna hunt for very long. I've been looking for this. This is embroidery floss. You can buy it at any craft and yarn store. But the cool thing with this stuff is that it actually separates into finer threads. So I can pull a bunch of this off like this and it'll form much finer threads, which is perfect for hanging these little ornaments in the middle of the picture frame. So. Let's see, I don't like that one with that. That's okay. I think I like that one better. It's a little richer with it. And this one, oh, that one will go in that one. So I'm just gonna take this, thread it through here. And then I'm gonna tie a little knot on the top of it. Um, yeah, I used to do a lot of this stuff. I mean, I had jobs where I would assemble stuff like this. And I was doing it like when I was 13. I worked for some very fun, very creative people. And I learned to do a lot of interesting stuff. Let's twist that tighter so that it will come through. Actually, I want to do it so it comes through the other side. Oh, I want it through the back. Um, and yeah, I learned to do a lot of this stuff before I had arthritis in my hands. Now the arthritis wants to make it a little challenging. <laughs> so I wanna make sure it hangs about center. And then I'm gonna come back here and tie a knot. little hand movements for tying fine things it used to be a lot easier for me to do. So, so when you get arthritis in your hands, be aware that it's not just um, that sometimes things hurt. <laughs> it's that you just don't bend the right way when you're doing little tiny things like this. But I can still do it. Yay! Okay, so I got that. So now that will hang in the center of this, like the frame covers the ornament, and then we're gonna put a ribbon on the top. Let's see, we've got all these wonderful glittery gold ones. I want, I think I'm gonna take a glittery, really glittery one that's a little yellowier gold. And I really do look at each, okay, I look at all the stuff I drag everywhere else too, because tape gets stuck to things. Um, 
but I, I look at the tone of my ornament before I put a bow on it to try to figure out, you know, really what kind of works with it. You can't just, you can just slap anything on there you want, but sometimes you gotta take a minute, make sure it all looks the way it should. Okay, I got that. Tying bows sometimes can take a little skill so that you get everything facing um, all the ribbon. If, they, if the ribbons have sides, sometimes they have a shiny side and a, a matte side. So if you want all the sides to look the same, you have to kind of manipulate the ribbon while you're tying the bow. And that can be a little challenging from time to time. Like this one wants to turn, flip itself back over more berries yeah let's see i got gold stuff in. i got a little gold berry so i could put a little sprig of berries right in there so i've got i take keep a little wire clipper clip things low and you can just tuck this in under here and because these are wired you can kind of twist things to make them hang on here the way you want. So if you want it to dangle down a little bit, you can bend them. Uh, I often will take the, cause there's always a little wiry stubbly bit hanging down. So if you look under there, that's a little wiry bit. I wanna make sure I shove it back through that hole if I can, just cause it will look nicer. and then there we go so I've got that done let's see what else I've got in here if I want to stick a little sprig of something else in it I have this huge bag of stuff which is funny because normally I have tons of this kind of thing already floating around I don't know how I didn't have all of this already but again a little run over to Michael's I love these little things that look like exploded dandelions. So I'm gonna clip that off. And we're gonna stick that under as well. And then I'm gonna take that, wrap it around there. What I'm doing helps anchor all this stuff in here together. I'm trying to make sure everything's well twisted around the ribbon so that um, it will not come flying out. Now, I am sure there's way easier ways of doing it than the way I'm doing it, but I really like how that came out. Look how cute that is with the little berries dangling. And I need to angle the camera up just a tad so you can actually see it as it hangs. And look how cute that is. Just a little bit of ribbon, a little bit of uh, threads, and a little bit of floral decoration. Now I could go bigger on this, I can add more, and I could add another string or just use a Christmas tree hook and hang it that way. So there is that one done. Now we have our little guy here. Um, and he's two different colors, so I think for the fun of this one, I might pick a good red ribbon. And I don't want glitter on this one. I don't think I'm just gonna go satin. Red satin will be nice. Now, of course, you can take all these little trimming bits and pieces and really, really easily just glue
glue them to this, but I kind of love, and, and this is something I've done all my life. I like them kind of tied up into the ribbon so that if they get ugly and nasty and need to be replaced, I can just take it off and not damage the ornament. Alrighty. So I pre-drilled this earlier today. Okay, we're gonna flip this back down. Okay, so I'm gonna flip that back down. And I can, my goal on this one is to tie a little bunch of stuff right at the top because this, again, two-sided ornament, um, unlike the other one, the other one had, sort of had a specific side. This is two-sided. And if you cannot get your ribbon through your hole, the first, wow, that sounds so gross. <laughs> Sorry. If you can't get the ribbon through the hole that you've drilled, and I drilled holes in all of my little guys earlier today, um, fold it in half, pleat it up, and worse comes to worse, if it really won't go through, take a piece of tape and bunch up the end and wrap it tight in tape like an aglet for a sock, or for a, sorry, for a shoelace, and that'll work too. You just need to be able to thread the ribbon through. So this one, I'm not tying a bow on yet. I wanna tie a knot so it doesn't move. And we're gonna take a little bit of one kind of berries, similar to the ones we had before. And let's see what else have I got here. Checking my bed, I have so much stuff in here. Look how beautiful that is, that's those artificial, um, holly, uh, you know, little red berries and, and stuff. I love this. So I think I'm going to clip a piece of that and a little piece of berry that I clipped before. Yeah, I won't use it this time, but no biggie. I'll use it for something else. Okay, so I've got a, and all I've got is a little wire snipper here to break these apart. Okay, so let me make sure and really what I want to do is tie it so that it can hang like that on this side, and then I can take another one and do it on the other side. Where is that stuff that I just clipped? And I know some of you are gonna say, well, why are you taking that big one? You could, you, you could trim something smaller. And the reason is if I have a big piece like this that's got two branches, there's a little Y right there that allows me to tie the whole thing together in the center with a piece of ribbon. If I only went with single ones, it's a lot harder to do. Okay, so I've got that on that side, going through that ribbon. And I've got this on this side. There's gonna be so many of these little bits and pieces of stuff left. I'll be able to decorate ornaments like this for the next, I don't know, 20 years. Okay, so I'm gonna tie this down. So I want that to go down on there further. It's all caught up right there. And you may hear kids and stuff outside. You know, it is Halloween, and we have our candy basket set outside for our passing children. We usually have an event called Monsters on Main Street. Uh, unfortunately, that had to be canceled this year thanks to COVID. So I just made sure I had a bucket of candy outside just in case we had any little little visiting monsters so that everybody can have a little bit of a treat. Okay, so I don't like I don't like the way that's hanging. It looks like that it's got a bush hanging out of its head. So we're gonna change that. And honestly, I do this with all the time. Um, it happens. I just don't get it the way I want it. So it just looked too big, quite frankly. It's just too much. I don't want scissors. I want my snippers. So we're going to figure out a different way to do this. All 
pocket. Let's see if I can get a little tie on this side. I should be able to do this. And then I can clip that down at the top. Just gotta make sure I've got this anchored in. I could try just tying the top of the branch, but honestly, that never stays. It doesn't. Okay, let me flip it over so it's on this side. So I can get the other branch on. I'm just sort of weaving it through the individual little spiny things on here so that everything's well and thoroughly anchored. I'm gonna tie a bow on this side and I could come back and tie a bow on the other side if I wanted to. But what I've done now is secured my greenery nicely at the top and then I'm just going to take this and we're going to pull that down a little bit and there we go we're all we're all gussied up now I can put a little thread through here I could put another bow on here whatever I want but I am decorated so we'll set that one aside we have these big guys and again they're two-sided but I don't think I want to um, garland this one up like a two-sided one I want to keep it uh, simple on one side only and I have a little bigger ribbon which might work because it's a little bigger ornament There's another technique to doing this that I'm going to show you all that I saved for the bigger ornament because it's a little easier to see. I'm taking a slightly longer piece of ribbon and I'm going to make it in a loop like this. Then I'm going to shove that loop through here. I'm going to take some of my wonderful little decorations. Let's see what have I got in there. I have got, I'm only putting the decorations on one side this time. I'm going to take this. And let's see what else do I want to put. Do I want to put a little of that? I got that right there. Why not put it right in? So I'm gonna stick that in over the loop so that it's caught in it. Just like that. And then I'm going to hook my little flower in and I'm gonna pull the loop back tight. So now everything's anchored. Of course, these darn pine branches want to just travel those evergreens, the fake evergreens. So now I've got to get it well anchored in again because it's going to annoy me and it split off. Oh, I love how these artificials do that. Fortunately, the twig base is right there. I shove it back on and we're back in business. The way that's angling, I could take another one, shoot it out that side. That's, that looks kind of cool. I'll take that. Ugh. These little guys like to, you know, get stuck on each other. Okay, I need something that is a good grab. 
I always open these up to see how they're placed to see which way I want to cut it so that I get what I want. And I've got to stop trying to cut them with the scissors. Good grief. Okay, so when I pulled that tight, it did, it pulled this one way. So I'm going to take a branch and open it up. These all like to stick together. Now, if all I did all day, every day, year in, year out, was make ornaments, I'd probably have a better, faster system for this, but I don't. You're getting this the way I've been doing it as a hand crafter for a long, long time. All right, there we go. See, now I've got that spread. I can stick my little flower in. And then I get to come back around here. And tie a bow under it. I really need to put the bow over that way because it's going to hang down. Now you can do much more elaborate bows like you see some of the wreath makers doing. Um, wired ribbon also works really nicely for a lot of this. It looks very, very pretty. Um, but you can keep it simpler too. If you don't wanna go all out like I'm doing with all this, don't. Just put a ribbon on it, you're fine. But you know what? That really does look awfully cute. And that it, it just it just takes a little time. That's all it does. It's, it's not even complicated. I'm obviously not painting anything today. I'm just showing you how I'm finishing up ornaments that I've created. So here is our truck. We've got the truck here um, that we've done up clearly for Christmas as an ornament. So this has to be. We're gonna we're gonna flip back on this side. We're going to do. Um, little ribbon to hang this by and then we're going to um, create some little decorations where the where the knots are going to be right here i'm just pulling out another piece the plastic coating that they wrap around this stuff is such a pain to get off cut a piece and we're going to knot our ribbon at either end here because that's the best way to get it to hang centered. And of course this does not want to go through easily so I'm going to give it a little twist see if I can feed, feed it through. And you know, you can use things like the tip of a scissor or a, a pin or anything else to help push it through the hole. I do that all the time. Clearly you just saw me do it with a, a scissor. But you know, things, things don't always like to go through openings easily, especially if you just drilled them and there might be a little bit of uh, splinter in one spot, which is what I got right here. That I can cut off with a scissor. Take the tip of my scissor, push that through. I want to make sure I got the length right. Looks about right. Now there's lots of ways. I can just tie a little knot. I can leave it a half bow. Just depends. And I think I'm going to just leave it sort of a little half bow because that'll give me a nice way to um, place in some other decorative stuff. 
So I gotta pull it out big enough so I can wrap it around my fat finger because my fingers feel huge when I do stuff like this. I know, I know you all have had that similar feeling of like, oh my God, my fingers are just enormous. Why is this not working the way I want it? My fingers are so big. Well, that's pretty much me every day when I do little stuff. Okay, so I've got that looped like that. And I'm just taking it, I loop this over my finger, wrap it around, and pull the loop through, almost like I was tying a bow, but it's really only a half, a half bow. Sorry, my fingers are not cooperating. My hands are very stiff today. end of the ribbon is trying to pull through and I don't want it to do that. Okay, I just want to keep it as close to the same size as the one on the other side. I think I could tighten that right there like that. Okay. So now it'll just hang looking like that and that in itself has a nice look. I just want to trim this off because the other end here is not as big. Let's see what I got in Oh, look, I have little pine cones. Little pine cones mounted on little wires. Snip off the pine cone and stick it right into the half bow that I knotted. I'm gonna pull it open a little bit with the tip of my scissor, um, simply because I cannot make my fingers work like that today. Okay, let's work that wire in here. Or I, it's actually a double wire, so I just noticed that. I can take it, twist it, the little two wires back here, bend it. There we go. Okay, so I'll show you up close what I'm talking about. I just I was about to make my life harder, and then this the, the uh, little pine cone actually made it much easier. So when they wire these together on the stick, they wire the pine cone, and when you clip it, they're, I gotta, I'm separating it right now so that I can show you. Of course, there we go. So what they do on the back of this is that they weave a little thin wire through the pine cone and then weave the doubled wire back into the stem that they're doing. Well, that worked out really nicely for us because now I have this little extra piece of wire. This makes my life so much easier here that I just take and twist it right behind the knot that I just made. And we're well anchored. Okay, just look how cute and country that is. I haven't done anything else. And of course, I can always personalize it to say Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. You know, I can put my name Maury on it. I can put my husband's and I down as Mr. and Mrs. Dunbar established whenever. And, you know, I can do that. And on the other side, it's just going to hang like that. And I could personalize it further. So look how cute this is. This And this is... It looks really, really expensive. And I'm gonna tell you right now, this one was $2.99. I've gotten one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I get nine pine cones on it, which at the very least gets me four ornaments and then maybe five with the extra one. So yeah, you're getting a lot of this. Now, some of these are more expensive. These are $7.99. Of course, Michael's is always running specials, so definitely do. I don't think I paid a full price on, on any of it. Like, all these or these twigs and everything, I think they were all 30% off and things like that. All right, so this is the one we did yesterday. We can do more. I'm, I'm, I've got to stop. Unfortunately, my hands are really fighting me today. And... Uh, just a little, I guess I'm just a little chilled and stiff and my hands don't want to work well, so I'm moving very, very slowly. But we've done, let's see, we've done 
one of these. We've done one of these. We did a gingerbread man and we did our little hanging ornament. So I just wanted to inspire you with ideas of different ways to do things. Now this ornament came from the dollar store. These frames we carry and we also have them smaller. All these wooden cutout ornaments that you've seen that I've been wor working on, the bigger ones, the, the truck, the gingerbread man, the tags, those we carry. We are getting a new order in sometime next week. So we will have loads of these ready for you all to purchase. And of course, if you like any of the ones that you've already seen me made, uh, these are for sale too. So give me a buzz, just drop me a line. They're not, because I haven't finished decorating them, they're not on the website as a specific item for sale. So if you just see one that you like that I've been working on, tell me, drop me a note. I'll let you know how much it's gonna cost. And a friendly reminder. Ooh. Um, so this is, this is actually a good thing to know. Yesterday I was doing a live for somebody else and this is one of the cups we finished and I splashed some uh, um, stain and seal from Faux Effects on here. Watch. This is how nice it is to have epoxy. I'm just taking my fingernail and a little, a little saliva. Yes, I will wash this before I put it on the floor. No, it's nobody needs to have COVID from my putting my finger on stuff. But you know, here's a little water too. That'll work as well. Epoxy sheds almost everything. So if you're working in your studio and you accidentally splash some paint or something on something that you epoxied. Look how easy that just came off. All right, now, if it's stained, it doesn't, doesn't come off that easily. You know, if I've stained an actual piece of wood, I'm not gonna scrape it off, that doesn't work. It just happened to shed on the epoxy. Now, this is still my favorite cup from yesterday, the Celebrate cup with the champagne glasses. I just, these, everything's going really nicely with Christmas and pretty much folks, unless I'm working on a piece of furniture, it's gonna be 24 hour Christmas from here. All right, let me flip this up. Let me see if I've missed anybody's questions. And I'm gonna roll back because obviously I can't read questions when the camera's face down. Uh. <laughs> Rima's telling me to get a round ornament so I can teach her how to tie a bow on it. I don't know. Rima, you're going to have to be more specific. Do you want the bow to go around the round part of the ornament? Or do you want to tie a bow at the top of a Christmas ball? Because the second one's easier. The, fir the first one requires a little bit of hot glue. But I it can be done. Okay, let's see what else. If anybody's got questions that I missed... Thank you, Sue. That is indeed cute. You guys are wonderful. Morning, Desiree. And Lisa. And Sue. yes, Susan, the berries are so cute. Lisa, hi to you too, Maddie. Gosh, all I've got a bunch of my Lisas in here today. Um, so awesome. Okay. Uh, you hope I have a tree to display them for people can see them to purchase. Desiree, my whole Christmas window ends up looking like a forest. And so I hang not only my ornaments from it, but I hang small versions of the products we carry so people know that you can, not you can get the ornaments or you can buy the products to make them. We had like killer window last year and we'll probably do something really fun again this year. Um, I am this year a little disappointed. I suddenly realized my mother, when she passed, we had this crazy Santa that she brought up from South America. And they're everywhere now, but nobody had them at the time. And you walk by it and it sings jingle bells and dances. I sold it at her estate sale and I'm kind of kicking myself because I'd really love to have that in the window this year. Oh. <laughs> there, there, there. Yes, it looks like an Ewok. You guys are so funny. You're so excited for Christmas and making, Susan. Yeah, you know what, Susan? I, I love making Christmas stuff. I'm a Christmas junkie from way back. Let me see if, Barbara's not getting great light. I know, we have, the light in here is really questionable and I haven't been able to get a good setting for a lamp so you can see over things, but I promise to work on that. So 
but let's let's take a look at some of these a little more close up so you can see them that's one side here's the other and with a little light on them here we go we've got I've got my like desk lamp that I'm aiming at them I need a so much better light in here my studio light at the old place was different. It hung differently, so it was real easy to display with. I haven't gotten a good grip on the studio lighting in here. So there's this one that looks great and jazzy from this side, and then this side, you still have this beautiful elephant face on there. And then we have our little country truck, and then a little more bear, it's a little wild like in our berry truck on the other side. Um, what have I got here? Here we go. And then here is our hanging ornament in a hanging frame. So now I think maybe you might see it a little better to get the idea of the lighting and everything on it. And this is just going to be so cute. I hope that helped a little, Barbara. I apologize for it being so... I struggle with the light in here. You know, it's really an interesting thing. Every time you move into a new space, even a year after being here, we still try to find ways to be better. And sometimes we make it and sometimes we don't. Okay, let's see, let's see. Sandy, thank you. And Lori was here. Oh, these would these are gonna be so great on a tree. Thank you, everybody. And happy Halloween to all of you. Um, is my my word my cutouts, the ones that we carry, they're either birch or poplar. Um, they are about a quarter of an inch thick. They're much thicker. These are, let me, let me show you. These are the dollar store ornaments and they're maybe an eighth of an inch thick. These are much heavier weighted. They're twice as thick. No, no question about it. So we're, we have a, a wonderful supplier who cuts all these gorgeous stuff for me. So they're either going to be Baltic birch or they're going to be, um, poplar. I don't know. It's whatever they send me. It's whatever they get the better pricing on. They have a couple different suppliers for woods. It's all the same thickness. They all the same quality, but it depends on whether they can get birch or whether they get poplar. That's what, that's all I can tell you. All right. I think that answered everybody's questions. Again, we're going to do a quick rundown reminder. I'm going to put this camera up just a little higher. Quick reminder about our contest. Um, remember, you must go back to last Tuesday's video. All right. Um, I'm going backwards and notifications keep coming in, even though I try to make them stop. So next Tuesday, our contest ends. Jeez, really stop texting me, people. I turn things off and the text still come in. Um, next Tuesday, our contest ends. We started it last Tuesday. To enter you must go to last Tuesday's video called Cups and Contests, last Tuesday's live. And in that live video, I've given all the rules and they're all posted at the top. But what you need to do, one entry per person, the last person who, the person who won the last contest is not eligible to win again. You need to post one item, fall or Halloween related that you made. It can be ceramics. It can be foiled. It can be painted. It can be sculpted. It could be a display piece. It could be photography. It could be a painting. It's not specific in what it is, just the season, and that you made it. So fall or Halloween, you need to have made it. It doesn't have to have been made this year. It could be something you made a while ago. It's your favorite thing that you've ever created for the season. Perfect. One entry per person. Entries end at two o'clock on Tuesday, on election day. The next day, we will come back. I have a committee. We're going to choose the top four entries. The top four entries will be notified that they are going into a drawing on Wednesday. We will draw the winner on Wednesday. The winner will receive a large, this big, paper mache pumpkin with leaves. You will... No, no figuring out what it is. <laughs> no, no photos. You will receive a large papier-mâché pumpkin. You will receive four ounces of Artsyville foil adhesive. 
you'll receive some base paint, you'll receive uh, some glitter, you're gonna be receiving an entire pumpkin kit and you can specify your foils if you have a season or color preference. Lisa, again, I will re re reiterate the contest again. Everybody creates stuff at, for fall and Halloween. So our contest is, it started last Tuesday, it ends next Tuesday. On last Tuesday's live video called Cups and Contests, you need to take post a picture of a Halloween or fall related item that you've created. Like I said, it can be a painting, it can be photographs, it can be sculptures, it could be foiled, it could be decor, it could be a prop, it could be whatever you want. And then you need to post that picture in, that, under, in the comments under that video. Last two day, Tuesday's Cups and Contest video, post that picture in the comments on that video. One entry per person, no more. If you put a second entry in, the only your first entry counts. I'll delete the other one. That's it. One entry per person. Next Tuesday, we will have our committee pick the top four winner, top four entries, and then those top four entries we will put into a drawing that we will do live on Wednesday during our Facebook Live. I think Lisa, if I if I'm still not making it clear, let me know. I've also written all of these rules out in the description of the contest on last Tuesday's Cups and Contest video. So please, the only thing you have to do, and you can only enter by posting your picture under that video. If you, you can post it anywhere else you want, but that won't be an entry to the contest. If you want to enter the contest, it has to be entered in the comments under that video. All right, everybody, it is, wow, it's quarter to one. We're closing early today because it's Halloween and I have a candy shoot to assemble in my front yard and we have neighborhood kids coming by. So hopefully we'll have lots of little kids coming by socially distanced in cute costumes because there are a lot of kids in our neighborhood. All right, everybody, have a wonderful, wonderful, happy and happy Halloween. I'm gonna keep jazzing up stuff and then I'm gonna head home. All right, everybody, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.